upon the throne of human hearts Who's your heart's king? Who's your heart's king? Behold your king Behold your king The baby born in Bethlehem Is Lord of everything Behold your king about me is there room for Jesus in your life or are you still the king
Look over to my right hand side and sure enough, there's a front door standing wide open. The girl says she's in her bedroom upstairs and you gotta do your job. As they go into the house, there's basically small little lights that are plugged into the sides under the, the windows, those little, I call them walking around lights and nights, all the lights they had. I didn't want to give away my location or anything, so here I'm walking throughout the house trying to find out who's in there. And I entered one room, and there he was. He was so tall, Brother Mark, he got nothing on you. <laughs> he, you ain't got nothing on him, shall I say. His head was about touching the ceiling. <laughs> Dressed all in black. He had a gun in his hand. Mm. And I screamed. And I didn't say, ah! <laughs> I screamed. Let me see your hands. He didn't move. I said it again. Let me see your hands. Then I realized that shadows can't hurt you. <laughs> and yes, it's a true story. I was scared of my own shadow this past week. Here I am thinking the worst to come to find out all it was was she had had a nip too much to drink. Imagine college students doing that. And she had forgotten to close her door all the way. And the good old wind had to blow her door wide open. Mm. And she was scared because of that. Thank God it was nothing, right? But to me, for a half a second, my life stopped when I saw that guy with the gun. And it was actually me. <laughs> sometimes our imagination plays tricks on us, don't it? Well, last week, I love Brother Jeffrey Dith, I know you all do. He made a comment that this past week, and I totally agree with it, it's not a bad comment. Here's the comment he made. Look around real quick. Everybody look around. They're pretty much all gone now, except one back there, and there's some in the back row back there, but there's some kids in this church now, amen? Praise God for that. There's some young families in the church. Praise God for that. Some grandparents in this church. Praise God for that. And some of y'all great, great grandparents. Some of them, praise God for that. So we're starting to get kind of population starting to get back. We're starting to get back as a family. We're growing. God's doing some great things here. God is on the move. God is a powerful God. He's still alive and still saving and still working wonders. And here's the comment that Brother Jeffrey made. Church is growing. I'm loving it. That means the devil's about to do something. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No truer comments have been said. Because the devil hates growth. The devil hates when Christians come together. The devil hates anything taking place in the church where God is being glorified. The devil hates it. And when things are going great in the church, you better Christians understand this fact. The devil's still alive and still well and still an enemy of the church. And when things are going great, you better believe the devil it's going to come proud. I'm going to share some verses with you. Now, I believe that statement. How when it comes to the church, here's the whole motto of tonight's lesson, today's lesson. The title is this. Even though the shadow may be all around us, we've got to stick together. We've got to stick together. I'm going to share some verses with you about this enemy we all have. Here's 1 Peter 5, 8. Be a sober spirit. Be on the alert. You know what alert means? No, once. <laughs> <laughs> Be on the alert was like this little girl in the room last week when the front door got kicked in. It alerted her. That scared her. It took her for a surprise. She was not expecting it to take place. But I'm expecting the devil to show up. I'm expecting him to show when things of God are going great. But I know this, I have a God who's bigger than any problem that he can throw. Amen. Just be on the alert. Your adversary is your enemy, the one who hates you. The devil prowls around like a roaring lion. In other words, he can't hurt you. He can only put fear in you. He can't do anything to you because I'm a child of the Lord. I'm in the hand. 
hand of my God, nothing taking out of God's hand. Yet he's going to prowl around and try to intimidate us and try to scare us, think, seeking someone to devour. John 10 tells us this about this great thief we have. The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and destroy. You see anything in there about building up, encouraging, taking care of, and making us feel all happy and good? No. It says he comes to steal, steal your joy, <coughs> steal your happiness, to come and kill you spiritually, and destroy our church. Jesus says, I come, they have life. Have it abundantly. Which one do you rather have? <coughs> Death and destruction? Or life of Jesus? So I'm going to say, Satan, do your best. I serve the Lord. Here's Ephesians chapter 6. God's word tells us this. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of whose might? <coughs> Put on the full armor of God. That you be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. You know what schemes are? His deceit and his trickery. From the very beginning, he's very, very perfected that art of being a great schemer. And my favorite of all that verse is above all, taking the shield of faith. One of the greatest tools we have in our, our arsenal. On our, on our sword, we've got our shield of faith. That we are unable to extinguish or quench. What's that next word? It's three little letters. Starts with A, ends with L, and L's in the middle. Oh. All of the fiery darts of the wicked one. I mean, it's matter what Satan may throw at us as an individual or as a church with that shield of faith, no matter what obstacle he throws in the way, with the power of Christ. We can extinguish all of his attacks. Now, I'm going to ask this question. There's been a, a story going around in many churches and denominations that once you become a Christian, once you join the church, everything is just fine and hunky dory. That's the biggest lie Satan's ever told. Because being a Christian is hard, isn't it? Amen. Not only is the world looking at us, and we judge under the microscope of the world, but we're trying to live holy in God's eyes. And not only that, but also the devil is trying to attack us also, because now we're his enemy. It's hard being a Christian. That's why it says those who enter the kingdom should be pressed into it like a wine press. It's hard. Worth it. Whole lot worth it. It definitely beats the outcome, amen? Because hell's going to be hot. <coughs> There's a problem. And this problem we're going to look at today is what happened in the Corinthian church that I believe is going to happen here. The reason I know that is because I know the devil. Like you all know the devil, right? We all knew him one time in our life, didn't we? We all served him one time in our life, didn't we? Praise God we serve the Lord now. So we do know the Satan's tactics against us. He knows our very weaknesses, don't he? Yeah, he knows what we addicted to. He knows what we lust after. He knows what's wrong with spiritually with us all. And he uses that against us to pull our flesh back to the wrong side. So he knows how to tempt us. Now, like Ms. Connie said this morning, yet again, through my sermon, temptation is not a sin. Not a sin being tempted is being us acting on that temptation is what leads us into sin. Here's the problem with the Corinthian church of today's scripture. They were a brand new church. They were growing leaps and bounds. They were having revival in this church. Great things were taking place. But however, the world around them was constantly changing. And they started accepting the generality of the world. All the, the liberalism of the world that began to bring into the Corinthian church. They began to bring in their false gods and their false beliefs and their false ways of doing things and their why can I use the word way left wing ways of doing things? That's left. Left wings of doing things. <laughs> That's what we're doing, this church. And because of the church began to be corrupt in this extreme way of believing the Lord. And Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wrote Corinthians to tell this church how to stand strong amidst all that's going on. 
So I'll tell you this. I believe the well devil does rage war in the church. And I'm proud to be a member of a church, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I'm proud to be a Christian. And Satan can come on because I'm still not changing size anytime soon about you. So let it come on. Here it is. Here's what scripture tells us. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses number 10 starts off saying this. Now this is God writing this, not just Paul. Here's what God tells us. Now I plead with you. Please, beg, please listen. <clears throat> Brethren, that's church people. By the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> that you all speak the same thing. Isn't that kind of hard to do? I want to do a, a quick little test real quick. Is that okay? Brother Vaughn, stand up for me. Brother Jackie, stand up for me. I want you to think both of a color. A color. Red, white, blue, green, purple. Think of a color. On the count of three, say your color. Ready? Everybody got a color? Need, need a color chart to look at? Y'all good? <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. Blue. Sit down, y'all mess up. <laughs> Sit down. Here's Paul encouraging the church to speak the same thing. I was just kidding y'all. Speak the same thing. How can we speak the same thing unless we unite in the same thing? Spend time together in the same topics and understand the mind of Christ together. And that there be no division among you, but that you be perfectly joined together. I'm going to say that word again. It's underlined in my Bible. It's underlined. Therefore, it's there. Perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am a Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or Paul, me and Peter, or I am of Christ. What they're trying to argue is, well, Paul baptized me or wanted me to Christ, and this one's saying, well, Apollos wanted me to Jesus, and this one's saying, well, my favorite preacher is Peter, and this man's saying, well, Jesus is my favorite preacher, and they're all arguing about which person they're going to serve in the church when we all know there's only one person we should serve, amen? And that's not a preacher. Amen. It's not a deacon. It's the Lord Jesus Christ and Him only when we shall serve. And they're, they're fussing the church about, well, I like the way that J.D.'s preaching. Or I like the way that Connie's teaching. Or Brother Ronnie's teaching. I like the way they does it best. And they're dividing the church upon which person they want to go be under their ministry. Shall I say that any teacher of this church is not under the ministry of Jesus Christ as an erroneous preacher? Our teacher. And he goes on and says this. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for any of y'all? <coughs> was any deacon crucified for any of y'all? Or any preacher crucified for any? Or any baptized in the name of Paul? Anybody? If you were, time to get baptized. Here's what he's saying. The division taking place is brought about one person. It's a devil's main job is coming to the church and want to divide what God's doing. Two words in that last verse. I'll share this word with you. Two words, key words. Verses, no divisions. That word division is actually a same term that when Jews would mourn or they would get upset, they would tear their garments in half. The same word is that which means rending of the garments, which means separating the two garments one's wears. <laughs> it says we don't know the vision. Not only it speaks of knowing the vision in our way we dress and act, but also in our mind. Not the vision in our opinions. Now let me ask this question. If I were to ask you, not wanting by any means, who do you vote for? Let me know. Then I say, you pick a person. Say, who do you vote for? Pick a person. 
wasn't very likely that we would vote the exact same way. Well, hopefully we should. <clears throat> but the chances are very likely, probably not. Because everybody's entitled to their own opinions, amen? And the Bible's not Bible says, the old quote says, they're like armpits and they all stink, don't they? Everybody's got opinions. But however, when it comes to the Bible, people also form their own opinions about what Scripture should apply to them. When it comes to Scripture, we have no opinions. The only opinion that matters is the opinion that God wrote it in black and white. His opinion is, do this way or do that. Therefore, his opinion is always right. His opinion outweighs ours. First was none of visions. Here's the second part. Be perfectly joined together. I'm going to teach you some Greek today. Is that okay? You want to go home today and say, I learned Greek at church. Here's your word. I like this word. Say, cart. Cart. Got to say it loud. Cart. 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 Tease. Oh. <laughs> Cartesio. There's your word. That's a big word. Guess what it means? This three-letter word has been thrown out here perfectly joined together. That's the one word, Greek, the whole entire thing. Here's what that word means, perfectly joined together. It's a fishing term. Any fishing among us? Here's what it means. It means to mend the nets. It means to fix the holes. It also refers to a doctor term. When a doctor takes a bone that is broken and brings the bone back together and the bone sets, that's what it's talking about. So what it's referring to is be perfectly joined together. What it's referring to is here is people that were once broken. People that were once not whole. Now coming together and binding perfectly together. And that is the identical definition of a church. Let me share it with you. How many folks in here have been known to be sinners? Anybody? Anybody ever been broken or hurting? <clears throat> Had a hole torn out in your heart? A church is full of broken people. And I'm proud that God broke me. He showed me how broken I actually was. And he brought me into a household, and now all the brokenness is joined together in <laughs> one, and now we're perfectly fitted together. All those different parts of the Christ, or not the body, are now come together and we're fitted to the Christ being our head. That's what that verse talks about. Page three. So, what is Satan's plan for our church? You see that great shadow behind me? I read no more, but there was a great shadow behind me. <laughs> What's his plan? Let me ask this question first. <coughs> Do you believe in the devil? Be honest. You believe he's here today? Chris, you believe he's here today? You know where you go? The devil comes to church every Sunday? And devil's got a favorite pew. <coughs> and devil's got his own favorite songs he likes to sing. He likes when we sing songs that don't, you know, just don't come from our heart. He likes that. A favorite is a song I despise the most. And please don't hate me for saying this. The song I despise the most, we don't sing it here. Thank God. <laughs> Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my own cry. While on others thou art calling, don't pass me by. Name one time Christ ever passed you by. He passed him by every day, don't we? He never passed us by. He likes me to sing those kind of songs that lift up God. You know, Satan knows the Bible better than we did. You know that? Remember when Christ was being in the, tempted in the, in the desert? Satan come to Jesus. And remember Satan told Jesus to do a couple things. Actually, three things. One of those is climb to the highest pinnacle of the temple and throw yourself off Jesus and here's what he quoted Satan quoted if you are the son of God throw yourself down for it is written written where? the devil didn't quote scripture better than we can he will command his angels 
angels concerning you. And they will lift you up in their hands so that when you not strike your foot against the stone, the devil quote the word of God, word for it out of the book of Psalms. The devil knows scripture. Well, Christians need to know scripture too. Because you know he loses in the end. You know he gets defeated in the end, right? But what Satan may try to throw at us as a church, try to discourage us, or pull us away from the Lord, we ultimately know he's still a loser in the end. And nothing can stop the church. Now, the other favorite verse is, the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. Amen. And it's so sad that many Christians are in quick coming to church and are divided The Satan steps in when they can simply quote the same word of God that Satan quoted and bring Satan to his knees. Satan pierces his ugly head. He can say, the gates of hell will prevail. cannot prevail against what God's going to do. Now here's God's schemes and Satan's schemes. Three of these. Or I should say God's plan. I'll be on God's side, right? And Satan's plan. Here's the first one. God loves growth. Amen? God wants us to grow and mature. God likes spiritual growth and physical growth. Sometimes more this way than this way, but God likes growth. Satan loves the vision. Satan loves it. Remember when God created Adam and Eve, what he tell them to go do? Go multiply. You know what multiply means? Grow. Go and expand. God doesn't like this stagnation. God likes things to grow. We see that after the ark that Noah come off, and what did God tell Noah and his family? To go and to grow. Go and grow. Go and multiply. We also see that through the descendants of Abraham, God said your descendants will be just one. No. Your sins might be the sins by the sands of the sea. You're going to grow and grow, and you count one, there's no one to count. You're going to just keep on counting and never reach the end. God is a God of growth. God is not one who's going to stay still. God's one of growth. However, look at the church. When it was founded, imagine when the Holy Spirit fell, what happened to the church? They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They closed the doors, closed the windows, and kept it all in, didn't they? No. The Spirit of God fell upon them. They went out and began to preach the gospel and tell folks about the Lord Jesus Christ and how He saves them from their sins. And 3,000 were saved in one day. The Bible says also they were adding to the church daily. God loves growth. Satan hates it. He says that very, very beginning has been trying to divide it ever since. Secondly, this. God loves family. Don't you like family? If you don't like your family, say amen. And hopefully you love your family. Not just your physical family, but your church family. We love each other. We're there for each other. We take care of each other. And we pray for each other. But Satan loves enemies. Satan loves when divorce takes place. Satan loves when families break up. He loves there's confusion in churches. He loves it because he can keep a family... Separated? He's starting to win. Here's the third one. God loves fellowship. Satan loves distance. Can we say the past two years, Satan's had a field trip at him? All this social distance is going on. This separated, us, can't see each other's faces. I can't see you smile. I can't see you smile. And then you stand six feet away, but you ain't got your glasses on. You can't see good in no way. And that's what we are. We're just some distance all the time. Y'all eat over there. I'll eat over here. And keep us separated. And we just talk on the phone when we can. To be honest, we don't. We're so distant. I'm going to stop there. How can we stick together? when the enemy comes. Here's our challenge. There's five of these. Really quickly. How can we stick together when the enemy comes? I promise you he's going to come. He's going to come. We have this old quote right here. That's not the quote. Oh, yeah. Here's the quote though. The quote is, the family that blank together stays together. And that word used to be the family that first 
is our first point. And we're going to praise together. P-R-A-Y-S. Together stays together. You believe that? We're not done with the message yet by any means. We're going to get out about five more minutes. It says the family that prays together stays together. Never done this in the middle of the sermon before, but let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, how great you are. Lord, lift this church up. Every member, every visitor, every person who claims the name of Jesus, lift them up to you. God, we know the devil attacks. He roars like a lion. But you're a God of love and forgiveness. You're a God who takes care of us. So Father, I ask you right now to keep us in your hands. And I ask for every single obstacle against this church and every obstacle against growth and every obstacle that comes against anything that you're going to be glorified in, Lord Jesus. You put a stop to it. Lord, glorify yourself in all things. In Christ we do pray. And then the firmness, first one, and the praise, P-R-A-Y-S, stays together. Second is the exact same word, a family that Praise, P R A I S E. Back up here. Ah, it is there. Family that prays together stays together. How many like praising Jesus? Anybody? You see him up the troll truck every once in a while, you say, What is that idiot doing? That is a drunk police officer. And that's what people think sometimes. I, I, sometimes if I hit the curb, I get to sing so loud in my patrol truck. I even missed a call the other day because I am singing my radio wide open. And I'm singing how great is our... No, I'm not. Uh, our God is great, so I'm singing. And I'm singing how great our God is. And I missed the call and didn't go out because I couldn't stop singing. I love singing. I like praising. You know, I learned a long time ago that if you're having a hard time in your life right now, let the praise go up and you'll see God come down every single time. Just send the praise up. Family that prays together. Thirdly, a family that blaze. These all, if you didn't know, these all rhyme. Don't know that? Mm -hmm. They're rhyming words. Blaze. You know what blaze means? Hope that's what you have inside of your spirit right now. It's the fire of God that lives inside of you. You have a spirit inside of you, the flame of the Holy Spirit that wants to come out of the whole entire world. There's nothing more powerful than a Christian who is on fire for God. There's nothing more pitiful than one who's not on fire for God. Fourthly is this. The family that gaze together. G-A-Z-E. Stays together. What does that mean? What does your gaze mean? Where your focus is at. Where your eyes are directed. I don't know about you. The Bible says the end time be a great falling away. I believe that time is already happening. There is a great falling away. Don't believe me. It says that people will be inventing ways to be corrupt. Well, turn your TV on, my friends. You'll find a new show every week about people inventing more ways to be corrupt. It's out there. I believe God is coming back any day now. So I'm going to keep my eyes fixed on the cross. And more importantly, keep my eyes fixed up there. Because I know one day he's coming back for me. Hopefully today. I ain't got to go to work then. And here's the next one. A family that graves. G-R-A-C-E. <laughs> we ain't seen our life. We love the graves, don't we? <laughs> Mainly chicken. Amen. 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 <laughs> like the graves. He spoke ways not about our job as sheep. We're all God's sheep. He is our great shepherd, and we're to graze in his pastures. That word graze for us Christians means not just a time to eat chicken and casserole, but a time to fellowship. A time family comes together. A time when we come together and truly worship and praise the Heavenly Father. How can we stay together? We can pray. We can praise. Set ourselves on fire for the Lord. Keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author, and perfect through our faith and everything we do seeks to bring honor and glory to Him. And lastly, keep fellowshipping together. Keep loving each other, encouraging one another, building one another up. When the enemy attacks, and He will, then He stick together. This first thought's here. Should we go one more little slide? Will it work? It won't work. I'll do it, says Bill. That's my daughter, by the way. <laughs> Another 
power of God, all things can fade away. And that's what we need to be. As one Christian is not to be scared of some simple shadow of the devil may do. But a Christian that are under the shadow of the cross. When the, under the power of Jesus, all things will be expelled. Let's pray. Father God, I praise you are. Help us today to worship you and to praise you and to honor you. Help us to know, Father, when the devil does attack, you are stronger than any enemy. You are stronger than any problem. And we turn to you in those situations. And we know, Father, that you're God and love your children. And we'll always, Father, always come to the rescue of a child of need.